Sweden is often hailed as a pioneer in sustainability, and for good reason. The country is known for its creative, resourceful strategies to reduce carbon emissions and conserve energy. One area where these innovations shine the brightest is in its heating systems. These systems range from the ordinary, like solar panels, to the extraordinary, such as capturing body heat from commuters and even using old Cold War era caves filled with near boiling water. Yes, caves. To understand how this works, we need to zoom in on the city of Esteros, located about 62 miles west of Stockholm. Hidden beneath this city are vast underground chambers filled with water heated to around 203 degrees Fahrenheit at first glance. It sounds like science fiction. But these caves aren't just hot reservoirs. They're an active part of the city's heating infrastructure. So, how did a Cold War relic become a futuristic energy storage system? Let's step back for a moment. Before centralized heating, most Swedish homes had individual boilers or stoves to stay warm. It worked, but it wasn't efficient. Then came the rise of district heating systems, where large plants generate heat at a central location and distribute it to homes and businesses through a network of insulated pipes. Today, more than 50% of all buildings in Sweden, residential, commercial, and industrial, are connected to this centralized heating grid. To put that in perspective, the EU average is just 6%. In Stockholm, the system is even more impressive. Over 1,860 miles of hot water pipes stretch beneath the capital, and 90% of the city relies on district heating. But what truly makes Sweden stand out isn't just the scale, it's the sources of that heat. Unlike many countries that still rely on fossil fuels, like coal or gas to warm water, Sweden has gone nearly fossil fuel free in its heating sector. Today, 95% of heating energy comes from renewable or recycled sources, and Sweden has no intention of stopping there. The goal? Achieve net zero emissions by 2030. One of Sweden's answers lies in the sky, literally. The sun plays a growing role in heating the nation. In 2021, Sweden unveiled Hogsladen, its largest solar heating project. Located in the town of Harnesand, this field of solar concentrators covers about 2.5 acres with a thermal output of 1.5 megawatts. Here's how it works. Sunlight is focused onto pipes carrying water using reflective surfaces. The water heats up and is then fed directly into the city's central heating system. During sunny periods, this setup can heat homes using nothing but sunlight, no oil, gas, or wood required. To illustrate the power of solar, just 10 square feet of solar collectors can produce the same amount of energy as burning 26 gallons of oil. Multiply that by thousands of panels, and you get a clean, powerful energy source. If solar energy is the most obvious form of heat, body heat might be the most unexpected. At Stockholm Central Station, over 200,000 people pass through daily, walking, standing, shopping, or waiting for their trains. All that movement produces heat, so why let it go to waste? The company Jernhusen decided to do something about it. They installed heat exchangers in the station's ventilation system. These capture the ambient warmth from passengers and transfer it to water pipes. That heated water is then used to warm up a nearby office building. Essentially, if you've ever walked through Stockholm Central, you've unknowingly helped heat a building. It's not just people that generate heat. Machines do too. Just think of how hot your laptop gets when it's running at full power. Now imagine rows upon rows of powerful servers inside data centers. These servers run 24-7, processing vast amounts of data, especially with the rise of AI. That means lots of excess heat. In Stockholm, IT companies have begun partnering with utility providers to recycle this heat, channeling it into the city's district heating grid. This isn't unique to Sweden. In nearby Helsinki, Finland, the company Vern reports that for every 1 megawatt of electricity consumed by its servers, about 1.3 megawatts of heat is generated, making data centers some of the most reliable sources of constant thermal energy. Another vital part of Sweden's heating puzzle is cogeneration, also known as combined heat and power, CHP. These plants burn fuel to spin turbines and generate electricity. But instead of letting the leftover heat escape into the air, it's captured and used to warm water. In Sweden, most CHP plants avoid fossil fuels. Instead, they use biomass with chips, bark, sawdust, and pellets, all leftovers from Sweden's massive timber industry. It's a smart way to give waste new life. 
but there are still challenges. Even clean burning biomass produces some emissions, and demand for heat dips in warmer months, leading to energy waste. So, how do you store excess heat for later? Enter the caves. Back in the 1970s, during the Cold War, Sweden was officially neutral, but quietly prepared for the worst. One precaution involved building a massive underground oil storage facility in Vesteros, capable of holding 79 million gallons of oil. The idea was simple. In case of a global crisis, Sweden would have an independent energy reserve. But by 1985, with tensions easing and global oil strategies shifting, the facility was decommissioned. For decades, it sat abandoned, dark, damp, and largely forgotten. That is, until Maler Energy a Swedish energy company, came up with a radical idea. Turn the old oil caves into a giant hot water battery. In 2021, the project began. It wasn't easy. While some oil had been removed, remnants still lingered, and the chambers held about 53 million gallons of water. To clean and convert the facility, hot water from the city's heating system was pumped into loosen and remove remaining oil, creating an eerily beautiful, steamy environment underground. Once cleaned, engineers installed 3,300 feet of piping, including 16-inch diameter mainlines, as well as wiring, sensors, heat exchangers, and all the infrastructure necessary to convert the caves into an energy storage system. By October 2023, construction was complete. In December, the caves began filling with hot water. The total cost, about 150 million Swedish kronor, roughly 13 million euros. But the benefits have already made the investment worthwhile. Now fully operational, the Vesteros cave system helps solve one of the biggest issues in renewable heating, seasonal imbalances. When it's cold, the demand for heating is high. But when it's warm, much of the heat produced by cogeneration plants goes unused. Instead of wasting that energy, the caves store it, acting like a giant thermal battery. When temperatures drop again, the stored heat can be released back into the system. This system also helps stabilize electricity production. Cogeneration plants often have to prioritize heat generation on cold days, limiting how much electricity they can produce. But with stored heat available on demand, plants can now focus more consistently on generating electricity when needed, improving overall efficiency. It's a brilliant example of how Sweden not only embraces sustainability, but reimagines the entire life cycle of infrastructure. From wartime oil bunker to modern-day climate solution, Sweden's heating innovations are more than clever. They're a blueprint for the future. From solar fields and biomass to body heat and data centers, the country has found ways to turn nearly every source of energy, no matter how unconventional, into a tool for sustainability. And now, even old Cold War caves have been given a second life, keeping homes warm while helping reduce emissions.